Add plugins are formidable tools as they open a lot of sonic possibilities when used with samples. Whether we use them for making subtle changes or for more extreme modifications, they often make the difference in our quest for a fantastic sound. There are two big reasons for why plugins are especially useful. If we want to change the overall sound, like adding some EQ or compression to our samples, and if we want to create variations out of a single sample, imagine having a single snare drum and it would be very interesting to be able to add different amounts of distortion or processing based on velocity to have a much more dynamic snare sound. So let's see the traditional way of using plugins and normally they are used between your sampler out and the audio card out, like in a channel strip. This would not be really useful in Kima Pro as what we really want to do is to process each individual sample a bit like uh, filters in traditional samples where for each voice, for each sample, you have a truly independent filter with its own settings. Also, if we are going to loop our samples, we need the processing to happen before our loop crossfades or our loops we probably click. We also want to be able to tweak plugin parameters in real time and we do not want to wait for all samples to be processed before being able to play them. As a solution to all these needs, in Kima Pro we combine the channel strip and the voice filter approaches into what we call the sound design layer. In the sound design layer, each sample has its own independent plugin chain affecting that specific sample only and the plugin parameters can be set or modulated by more than 40 parameters as low and high notes, velocities, loop length, um, custom envelopes and so on. The user interface is very simple and each layer has its own audio units chain affecting uh, the layer samples and so if you need 5 different chains for a drum kit you will create 5 layers. An important point is that plugins often use considerable CPU and RAM resources and so allocating a complete plugin chain for each sample might be too much for a computer. For this reason, uh, plugin chains are dynamically allocated and for each layer there is a maximum sound design polyphony parameter, which is the number of available plugin chains for that layer. Each zone in a layer can then be set to use or not the sound design layer. Of course, as a final result, uh, when plugins are used and an instrument is exported, a new set of processed samples gets rendered and used by the exported instrument. Additionally, Kima Pro also offers a sub-freeze function which renders in background the processed sample to RAM or to a temporary file on disk. When a pre-rendered version exists and you play that sample, the sound gets played back straight from that pre-processed version with minimal CPU usage and with no polyphony limitation, as it's not using a plugin chain in real time. Of course, this is totally non-destructive. When the sub-freeze option is active, every time a plugin parameter is modified, our samples will be rendered again in background, and if in the meantime you play the voice, no problem, as it will be played back using a plugin chain in real time. All this might sound complex, but in practice you just have to click the sub-freeze button and the software will automatically reduce the CPU load and offer you in broad polyphony when you use plugins. Let's see a practical demonstration. Here we have a drum loop and I will use a gate plugin. And of course I can always use the magic drag and drop export paths to render what I just did to a new file on the desktop. Here we have another case, uh, it's a simple Rhodes instrument. 
and I want to apply some ring modulation. As I did not activate the sub-freeze function and the sound design polyphony is set to 8, notice how when there are more than 8 notes playing at the same time, some voices will play unprocessed. Let's use other plugins on the same material. This is the Degrade plugin, if you like that kind of sound. This is a very interesting sound warmer. And here we have some spectral manipulation plugins. As they are very heavy on CPU, we will activate the sub-freeze function. And when a parameter changes, all the samples are pre-processed again in background. Here we are changing the EQ. Here we have a Solina strings instrument. And we are going to create some variations in our sound using a simple parametric EQ modulated by the top velocity for each zone. Keep in mind that this is not like a normal center. It's an editing process and as a final result we will get a new set of samples with all these variations. So let's first add the parametric EQ and set it to enhance the high frequencies. By splitting my existing samples with the split tool, I'm creating new zones now. And then I'm setting a modulation for the parametric EQ gain parameter based on the high velocity of each zone I just created. And now I'm changing the Q parameter to find the sweet spot for this sound. Now, let's add some spice to a snare drum.
we are going to use the parametric EQ again. And we are modulating the gain with the velocity. Kima Pro also offers a set of built-in audio effects which are very light and quite useful for tweaking sounds. Let's try them with some drum loops. This time I do not really want to build an instrument and I'm using Kiba Pro just as a sketch pad to process my samples. Once I'm satisfied I just drop my new set of samples to the desktop. <laughs> 